132. I want to read from Barcelona. Psalm 132. Barcelona says, The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, He will not come from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon their throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his habitation. Somebody say Amen. Amen. This morning I will share with us briefly on what I titled Keep the Covenant and the Testimony of God. Keep the covenant and the testimony of God. These are two major forces in the sight of God that makes God to preserve His glory and His power through generations. What is covenant? Covenant means an agreement between two people or between two groups or two nations. And the agreement will be based on this is the way we are going to do it. And both of them will agree on that thing and you will buy it by that covenant or agreement. What is testimony? The testimony of God is the word of God. Testimony means when God may have done something in your life and yes, we may be good. Yes, the sign and wonder. And God gives you victory or gives you blessing or answer your prayer. Then you have the testimony. Then you come before the people and say, This is my testimony. When God moves and there are signs and wonders by the demonstration of the power of God, then testimonies will abound in such a place. In the Old Testament, the act of God is also known as the act of testimony. This act of testimony represents the presence of God in the midst of God's people. And there was a time the enemies took the act of testimony away. They couldn't hold on to it because God punished them. They took the, not because of the act that was there, so they had to return the act back to Jerusalem. When there is a testimony in your life, make sure you keep the testimony. When you keep the covenant of God, then the testimony of God will be abundant in your life. Keep the testimony. Keep the covenant. God is faithful. In the book of Psalm 132, verse 12, it says, If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, God puts it before them. Your children have the responsibility. Let them keep my covenant. David, I have the covenant with you. Let the covenant not stop with you. Let your children and your children's children be also beneficiaries of the covenant. And God says that if your children will keep my covenant and my testimony, their children shall also sit upon the throne. Which means that if they don't keep the covenant, if they don't keep the testimony, the blessing will not pass on to other generations. People of God, there is a covenant of God for us in this place. And there is a covenant of God upon your life. And there is a testimony you have. If not for the fact that the devil knows you have a testimony, the devil would have killed you before now. The testimony is that you belong to Jesus. You belong to Zion. You are a child of God. You are untouchable. You are the apple of God. And somebody shout hallelujah. That testimony is enough to make the devil go mad. And the Bible says that the devil went out to attack those that carries the testimony of God. Keep that testimony. There are things you must not do. There are things you must not say. Even you must not say in order to keep the covenant and the testimony. For this time, if you're a married man, a married woman, keep to your spouse. Who oh, by keeping to your spouse, you keep the marriage covenant and you keep your testimony in the moment you leave your spouse and begin to sleep around. 
you are spoiling the testimony and you are spoiling the covenant. That will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. So God says, let your children, David, keep my testimony and let them keep my covenant. And God began to mention the blessing that will follow as they keep the covenant and the testimony. Let's see some of them. Back to Psalm 132. Look at verse 12. God says, if they will keep my covenant and my testimony, they shall sit upon thy tomb forever. That's the first blessing. When you keep the testimony and the covenant of God, it means generational blessing is your portion. That's blessing number one. Generational blessing. Which means that all the promises that God has given you is blessed upon you will not stop on you alone. It will pass on to your children and to your children's children. God is interested in blessing you and your seed. Somebody shout hallelujah. And this makes me to remember what happened to the house of Eli. God had promised the house of Eli that they shall be praised unto him forever. But because they flattered the testimony and the covenant of God, God said he has revoked the covenant. And God had to raise another person to continue that covenant. Ah, God will not raise anybody to replace him by the name of Jesus. So when you keep the covenant and the testimony, Generational blessing is a show. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's see some of that blessings that were put to you in verses 13 and 14. Verse 13 says, For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired him for his habitation. Verse 14, this is my best forever. Here will I pray, for I have desired him. This is another blessing. You become the habitation of God. We are wherever you go, God's presence is there. When you are at home, God's presence is there. When you are in your shop, His presence is there. When you are in the office, His presence is there. When you are traveling, His presence is with you. Because you carry the covenant and you carry the testimony. Listen to me. What you need to carry is what I'm telling you today. It is more than gold or silver. When the covenant of God speaks on your behalf, and you hold on to your testimony. The presence of God with you will defend you against every form of evil. Please, that covenant and that testimony must not spoil. Blessing number one is generational blessing. Blessing number two is because that you become the habitation of God and His presence dwells with you forever. Let's look at other blessings. In verse 15, it says, I will abundantly bless a provision. When you carry that covenant and that testimony, God is here that He will bless your provision. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. That means that whatever is in your hand, the blessing of God will come upon it. Let me give you an example. Jesus was in the wilderness, He was about to feed 5,000 people, but only two fishes and the five particles were available. And people said this cannot be enough. But when he blessed it, the food began to multiply and increase. And the people were offered and it remained 12 basket food. Which means that no matter what you have in your hand, the blessing of God shall be upon him. Open your hands and let me see you. Open your hands. I bless those hands. Can you say that you man? The blessing of God shall be upon you. Upon your hands, upon your business, and upon your provision. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout hallelujah. When you keep his covenant and testimony, the third blessing is he will bless your provision. You may have little in your hand, but when the blessing of God is upon it, it becomes sufficient. It becomes more than enough. And you begin to wonder, how did I not just saw this matter? How? You will be wondering, but the hand of God and the blessing of God is upon it. In the same verse, verse, verse number 14, of the verse 15, he says, I will satisfy our poor with bread. When the mention of bread in the Bible, bread represents the totality of man's needs. Bread means money. Bread means power. Bread means the totality of what you might need in life. 
And in the book of Exodus, Exodus 25, the Bible says, I will bless your bread and water. <laughs> Somebody say along with me, God will bless my bread. And water. and water. Say it as if you may. And say, God will bless my bread this year. And my water in the name of Jesus. Can you say a big amen? Yeah. When you keep the covenant and testimony, these are the blessings that will follow. God doesn't bless anyhow. God doesn't eat anyhow. God doesn't keep anyhow. God knows that when He gives you something, God knows the consequence. Whether you will lose it by or not, He says, Keep my covenant, keep my testimony. That marriage covenant, keep it. That testimony you have with God, keep it. When you keep those covenants and those testimonies, the Bible says, These are the things that God will do for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. We move on. Look at verse 16. It says, I also put a business issue, and as saints shall shout aloud for joy. Look at this double blessing. The Lord says, He will clothe you with salvation, He will clothe you with power, He will clothe you with strength, He will clothe you with ability, He will clothe you with prosperity. You believe me, say, Now, Amen. This will come as a result of keeping the covenant of God. It will come as a result of keeping your testimony. The devil is after your testimony. You might have been shouting, I don't know it, I don't smoke, I don't fornicate. Yeah, the devil will say, okay, go on, you will do it one day. The devil is your testimony. Oh, I love my wife, I love my husband, I can't cheat on my husband. The devil will say, go on, the devil will say something to spoil that testimony. Please, this allow whatever the enemy might bring your way to spoil your testimony. You might say, oh, I love my husband. I don't beat my wife. The devil will say, don't worry. I will violate one day you beat your wife. So that that testimony will not look at them. Please, keep that covenant. Keep that testimony. The devil is your testimony. Oh, you might say, I love my children. The devil your children. Give your children a you So that that testimony will spoil. Keep the covenant. Keep the testimony. God promised you that He will clothe you with salvation. And at the same time, in this verse, it says, You will shout aloud for joy. Somebody shout! Can you shout and scream? That is your inheritance as a child of God. God says, You will shout aloud for joy. As a result of keeping the covenant and the testimony. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at verse 17. We are still looking at the blessings that you know happen in your life as a result of keeping the covenant and the testimony. Look at verse 17. It says, We have made the all of every to God. I have ordained a man for my anointed. What does it mean? It means that your hidden potentials and your glory. We manifest. There are potentials locked up on inside of you. There are treasures on inside of you, spiritual and physical. There are some of us here, you may have tables of things before God and you are pregnant with those ideas. The Bible says that when you keep that covenant and you keep that testimony, the hidden potentials and the hidden glory will begin to manifest. Which simply means the condition for those things to manifest is for you to keep the covenant. At the same time, you keep the testimony. Somebody shout hallelujah. Last but not least, to that verse 18, his enemies will I clothe with shame. Come. When you keep that covenant, leave the issue of enemy to God. Hmm? Don't worry about that anymore. Just is to keep that covenant. And that testimony. Let God handle your enemies. You have more enemies than you can imagine. Those that appear to you either in your dreams or your other physically, those are the ones you recognize. But there are ones that you may not know. There are people that hate that you know because there are people that hate something about you. They never verify it. And they believe it. And they are your enemies. God said, no more. Verse 18, he said, his enemies will I know with shame. This year, every 
the enemy of your glory, God will kill them with shame. I can hear you with that. God will kill them with shame. And I say that I will happen here. He says, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. His crown. Can you touch your head? There is something on your head. Crown is on your head. Don't let the devil remove that crown. Don't let sin remove that crown. Don't let evil friends remove that crown. Can you touch your head? Look at what the Bible says. Upon himself shall his crown flourish. Your crown will flourish. It will flourish. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Put that your hands. You know there are things that God may have placed in your life that may look like crown. When you have a good husband, there is crown on your head. When God gives you beautiful children, there are crowns on your head. When God gives you an idea that will explode, it's like a crown in your life. And the Bible says, not only will you bear the crown, it says that the crown will flourish, the crown will increase, the crown will be in place. These are the things that will happen to you as a result of keeping the covenant and testimony. It is not too hard to keep the covenant. It is not too hard to keep the testimony. All you have to do is to close your eyes to whatever the enemies have to offer you. He's like the one that will look here and look there and mind this and mind that every opinion moves you, every comment moves you, every new blow moves you. No, 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 no. You will so shift away from the man of God. But by you are resolute and your eyes are fixed, you get on him. And you know that you carry something money cannot buy. You carry the covenant. You carry the testimony. Yes, you are more than conquerors. I pray for somebody here today. According to the word of God, that blessing, the is that blessing, is your portion in the name of Jesus. Number two, the presence of God shall not depart from your life. God will bless your provision. Amen. He will satisfy you with prayer. He will clothe you with salvation. You will shout out to God. Potentials in your natural find expression. In the name of Jesus, your crown shall flourish. In the name of Jesus, that's the plan of God. Only one condition: keep the covenant and keep the testimony. Somebody say covenant. Somebody say testimony. As long as you keep these two forces. All oh, these blessings are yours. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I pray for those that are listening to us and watching us afar off. That you open their eyes to see and to understand what you have for them this year, oh Lord. That covenant and that testimony in their lives. Lord, you will not let the devil come out with it. But oh Lord, you will let blessings flow in the name of Jesus. If you are sick, I declare your healing. To everyone in bondage, I declare your deliverance. I speak the word of authority over your situation. Let the eyes of the enemy be off from your life in the name of Jesus. I release you to the next level of blessing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying.